Hello, I'm Centrally Andrew Heaton, and you're being seduced by Mostly Weekly. Imagine you have a disability, and your doctor recommends a procedure for it. It lowers your blood pressure, it increases your antibodies, it improves your mood, and it adds years to your life. Now imagine that it's hard to access this service. And even when you do find a person willing and trained to perform the service, you can't legally pay for it. And that's why we should legalize medically assisted sex work. Thank you. Get back out there. But it's so obvious. So welcome to the world of sex work and disability. Both involve marginalized groups in society, and both mean you get to park in unusual places. And both sex workers and the disabled community encounter loads of misguided and preconceived notions about what their lives are like. Now this new field of study and practice goes by many names in the United States, but the most common name is sex surrogate, although I have a few more suggestions myself. Sex surrogates are called surrogates because they are substitute sex partners for the client's future romantic sex partners. Surrogates simply stand in or kneel in, or crouch in, if you're into that. Surrogates help clients flirt, caress, dance, perform oral sex, orgasm, and most importantly, learn about their sexuality. The clients of sex surrogates include physically and mentally disabled adults, trauma survivors, and other clients who simply want an educational approach to sex. But not me. Pfft. I don't need help finding a woman's clitoris. It's inside the belly button. Clients work with a talk therapist who then recommends a sex surrogate to help their client with an experience that is slightly more hands-on, or toes-on if you're into that. And this is an issue that affects a lot of people. One in eight Americans live with a disability, and the vast majority of those people are sexually active. Even more common is sexual dysfunction. Don't believe me? Just check your spam folder. <music> sexual surrogacy was popularized in the 60s by William Masters and Virginia Johnson, and somehow I managed to not make an immature joke about two sexologists named Willie Masters and Virginia Johnson. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the Academy. The research duo popularized sex surrogates as a way to treat clients with anorgasmia. It's important to note that surrogates take a more educational approach to sex than most sex workers. Also, contrary to popular belief, many expert sexual surrogates are men, and they help female clients get to know their bodies. But, uh, Sarah? Sarah, they'll be there when we're done. So as I was saying... Denise Beckwith is a world-famous swimmer with cerebral palsy, and she had this to say about her experience finding a sex worker. Quote, I really value that experience because it gave me confidence to then pursue other relationships, so sex work has an educative function. So all I'm saying is that if we legalize medically assisted sex, we too will win a bronze medal in the freestyle at the 2000 Sydney Games. One of the reasons that sexual dysfunction is so common is because a lot of human sexuality remains a mystery. Like how this man developed a new erogenous zone in his thumb after an accident left him paralyzed or how some members of the disabled community regain the ability to orgasm, or where the second clitoris is located. Sexual surrogates help people discover these answers for themselves and advance our greater understanding of sexuality. I'm just saying, we need to bone for science purposes. Which, by the way, is the title of my educational tape on how to pick up ladies. Here's a clip. Hey, uh, you <laughs> Speaking of being misunderstood, disabled people often face unfair stereotypes and many feel their sexuality gets ignored. Now, a lot of people with disabilities get it on just fine without the need for sex workers. I mean, look at Stephen Hawking, or FDR, or Frida Kahlo. Hot damn! All disabled, yet famous partly for their affairs and love stories. But oftentimes, heavily disabled people have limited interactions with people other than their caretakers, who are often family members that overlook their sexual needs, understandably. Look, finding sexual partners is hard enough even when you're not dealing with a physical or mental disability. And sometimes sex is just sex. Oh, I got a match! And she's a robot. But much like the Clinton Foundation, sexual surrogates operate in a legal gray area. And because we aren't having a frank conversation about every human being's sexual needs, their amazing service is relegated to the shadows. But these services are provided in other countries and have already shown their value. And the World Congress on Sexual Health in Australia in 2007 followed a study of 30 clients suffering from a range of psychosexual issues, and they reported a success rate of 95%. 95%? That's like the approval rating of a North Korean dictator. Medically assisted sex work is beneficial to both the client and the sex worker. Disabled adults are especially vulnerable to psychological stress and physical pain. And guess what is correlated with reductions in stress and improvement in pain management? What is sex? Really though, what is sex? And on the other side of the equation, one of the biggest concerns for a sex worker is physical safety. And when dealing with a physically disabled client, that isn't often a concern. In 1988, sex surrogate Cheryl Cohen Green performed sexual services for journalist and poet Mark O'Brien, who became paralytic from polio. The story of her helping him lose his virginity at age 36 was made into a critically acclaimed movie. No, not that one. 
Uh, nope, not quite. That's the one. So we can heap awards and laurels on movies depicting medical sex work, but it's still technically illegal. But we're making progress. Sexual surrogacy is gaining social acceptance abroad and in places like California, where they, ah, again, <laughs> perform oral sex, orgasm. Was that Oklahoma for orgasm? You can't, orgasm? I'm not married to any of you. I can't say that word. Oh. Clitoris. 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 Okay. It's also my favorite dinosaur.